Hello, so I'm going to show you real quickly how to do the Spotify assignment. What we are trying to get to is, I did a couple here, we can see. Let's see if I can open them all at the same time. Cool. So normally Spotify, they've had this as like a consistent um, design kind of style throughout their having been Spotify. Spotify is not super old, just to let you all know. Um, I remember I grew up with iTunes, so, and then Spotify came out and everyone, for the most part, switched to Spotify. But they do a gradient. Well, that's all this is, is going from one color to another. So right now it's going from green to blue here, and we have some white dots, and just some simple text like that. Um, this one I did a cool layer style. You don't need to go too far into depth. But um, this is really all we're doing. We've done a gradient tool before. We've done the circle tool and we've done text. So, and here's another example. So let's get started. All right, so the image I'm going to be using is this one. Um, you can take an image from the internet as long as it's appropriate. Um, you can take an image of one of your friends, family members, uh, whoever, again, as long as it's appropriate. If I see on here that it is an inappropriate uh, person or thing or they're doing something inappropriate, then you're not going to get credit for even having done all the work. So please keep it appropriate. If you have any questions about what's appropriate and what's not, please ask. So I'm going to see click and drag. Does that work? Yeah, it does. All right. You can also do file open and then uh, click on where it's saved at from there. But I click and drag apparently works as well. Image, image size. Here is where we see the amount of uh, DP. This is where we see the DPI. Remember, we need it to be like 200. So I'm going to select my 72 and do 200. Keeping my resample one checked, I'm going to hit enter here. And then you'll see it increase the pixels and keeps it nice and high resolution. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to command minus, command minus, command minus. Alrighty, so making sure that I have my DPI set to 200, I have a nice high resolution image that I'm working with, um, I'm going to get started here. So the first thing we want to realize is that, again, this is just a gradient. Give me one second, actually. Where did, where did my paper go? I lost my paper. Okay, that's okay. I'll just try to do this from memory. All right, so the first thing we want to do is select our um, person here. So this is my sister, and I'm going to do, there's a couple ways you can select. We talked about these in class. Um, I'm just going to do object selection. Image analysis, it is loading. My cross should be fully inside the object. Okay, so now I should be able to click. I'm sorry, I wanted quick selection. Okay, so there she is. She, some of her is highlighted. And again, all I did was, I didn't do object selection. I did quick selection here. And remember, we have this plus and this minus here. When I choose plus, it's going to add to my selection. What is selected right now is what is inside our marching ants. Remember that. Again, we talked about this in class. It should be a huge review. So right now we have some things that are inside of our selection here that we don't want and we have some things that we do want that are not included so right now we have a good amount selected obviously you'll be spending more time with this I'm just going to kind of go fast here um, I want to get rid of these dots here so I'm going to hit the minus command plus 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 to zoom in and I'm going to try to play around with my selection here again you're going to be spending way more time oops command z maybe I can do that you're going to be spending way more time making this perfect. And see, I don't want, I don't want that. I don't want that. I do want that. And the more time you spend on this part, the better off you're going to be. I could sit here all day and just do this but I don't want to waste too much of your time as long as you get the main gist. 
Alrighty, and her dress is here still. good enough for right now. Please spend your time though. Spend your time playing around, changing things. Good enough, good enough. It doesn't like the hair right now. <laughs> it's having a hard time differentiating between the hair and the background. Because the background's blurry and the hair kind of is a little blurry. And it's kind of mixing in with the background. And remember, you also have this lasso tool here. So I'm going to make sure. This is, um, when you hover over it, it'll tell you. It will replace the whole entire selection. So if you're selecting with the lasso tool, it's going to replace everything, just you don't want that one. <laughs> you want to add to your selection. It's called Unite here. This one is Take Away From, so just think of this as the plus. Think of this as the minus. And this is Intersect. Don't worry about that right now. So let's hit Unite, and let's draw. Ooh, that's not a great drawing that I just did. Okay. And I want to subtract from... I want to get rid of this guy, get rid of this, the last little tool comes in handy. And right now I'm editing super zoomed out, I would suggest zoom in, grab with your hand tool, move yourself, go back to your lasso, subtract from, and just try to make this nice and pretty. Okay, I should probably stop playing around because otherwise we're going to be here all day. So spend your time with this. Get your object. Right now we see everything that we want is selected. And we actually have selected our object here. You can do select inverse. So what that means is right now we have selected Morgan, but I want to select everything except for Morgan. So I'm going to hit inverse here. So what that did is our, our marching ants are still here. However, you'll see that instead of just selecting our object, it is selecting everything else. You see the marching ants around the border now? It's selecting everything else. So if we hit delete, nothing's going to happen. Well, okay, I'm sorry, I'm a liar. In Illustrator in Photoshop, it might yell at you here. Um, but again, because this is a free, um, free software, you're going to see it. It was kind to us, but sometimes it says, hey, you're erasing your background, but you need something behind it. Um, but again, in this free website, we're a-okay. So if you do select inverse, it's just select everything else, and you hit delete, and it will take everything away. So lucky us. But you see how it's choppy still? Like, my selection is not great. I'm going to Command-Z that. Command-Z again. Command-Z. All right, so we're back to just the object. This is before we hit inverse. Remember, when I deleted it, you could see how choppy my selection was. I want to make a smoother selection here. I don't want to make it look so photoshopped and choppy. So what I'm going to do is go to Refine Edge. Are you going to load? Load. There we go. Okay. So it, this, she looks lighter here because it's showing you what you selected. So what you selected is lighter. If you change this border to be something slightly bigger than just three, I'm going to do like five. And again, you guys can play around with this and I'm going to hit enter. Over here on the right, you can see a preview of what you'll get. And all it's really doing is making your selection slightly smoother. Like it's not as harsh. What we selected, it looked really choppy. So we're just kind of feathering it out, like loosening it up a little bit, loosening our selection up a little bit so it looks prettier. And right here we have selected new layer, and then I'm going to hit OK. So here, again, it doesn't look amazing. Like maybe I want to go back 
and change my refine edge thing to maybe be like 10 or something. I'll let you guys play around with that. But you see it looks slightly better. It's not as choppy. You see how it's kind of blurry in some areas? It's really nice. Um, it makes it look less photoshoppy. And right now her hair is, um, it looks super choppy and stuff because I didn't spend my time selecting out and making everything nice and pretty. Yours will look better because you're spending your time selecting it, making it look nice and pretty. You're playing around with your refine edge. Um, this feather here, if you change it to, let's say 10, enter. And that one didn't do much. Is it even letting me? Oh, it's not loading at all. Maybe I had to do that back whenever I was, back when I was selecting it. But either way, if you just stick with Refine Edge, you're good to go. But if you want to get more advanced with it, play around with Feather. It's actually really fun to do, and the option is right here. So, spend your time. Don't, you know, rush like I am rushing. Okay, so we have two Morgans right here. And you can tell because if we hit the eyeball, we can see the layer. And if I hit the eyeball again on this, nothing is happening. In reality, we have two Morgans stacked on top of each other. So when I hit the eyeball here, you're hiding the topmost Morgan. But when you hit the eyeball again, you're putting the Morgan on top of her. So you're not really seeing a difference. I want to get rid of this background though. So I'm going to select this layer. And I'm going to hit the trash can. So again, this checkered means transparent. means that there's nothing there. But I want to add color. So I'm going to do new layer. Click and drag this layer underneath Morgan. Go to my paint bucket tool. Click on this top most um, color picker here. All I have to do is click one time, hit OK, and then click anywhere on the transparent layer. There we go. I was like, it's not loading. So you can see more accurately my poor selection game right now. You see down here, it worked out very well. Um, it just happened like that, but I would have to spend more time around here. And if I really wanted to go edit this, I can go my background layer again, command plus plus plus, get my hand, move my view around, and I can get my eraser tool. And I can make my eraser bigger right here, to increase my size. I can make it smoother, edge is not so harsh. And I can kind of like erase from here, but look how harsh. Let me command Z, command Z. This is what I want to change. Sorry, not this. Smooth, we'll leave two, zero. I changed my size, but my hardness is what I wanted to change. Hardness means like an abrupt erase. See how I just erased that and it's complete crisp circle? Command Z. If you change your hardness down and re-erase, you see how it has like a nice kind of almost a gradient there of what it's erasing. It's a smoother eraser. It's a softer eraser. So... If I really wanted to be like a perfectionist, I can do this. Oops. That's so soft though that it's kind of putting like a white glow on her. And it's not terrible for what we're doing today, but it kind of looks a little weird. So to change that, I would have to go back up here, change my hardness, like increase it a little bit so there's less blurriness. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, definitely looks better. That looks better. Okay, command minus minus minus. So when you're happy with this and you played around with all of that and... There. <laughs> I saw you. Um, and you're ready to go. Then let's do, uh, you have to select both layers. So in order to click, normally to select a layer, you click on one or the other, but you want to select both in this case. So I'm going to hold down shift and then click on the other layer. And then I'm going to do image adjustments. And then you have all these lovely, oops, image adjustments. Then you have all these lovely things you can do. What we want to mess around with is gradient map. Okay. So here's our gradient. I'm going to click on this. Our gradient editor comes up. This looks super familiar. We're going to 
I'm going to kind of move this around a little bit so I can see my object here. And I'm going to double click this. And Spotify likes to do fun different colors. Um, I think I did blue and green for my brother. Come on, low little thing. Oops. Ooh, I am what like not glitching. What's the word? I am lagging. Terribly lagging right now. I'm gonna double click this, make it blue. Come on. Are you gonna let me? Okay, I had to click on this square here. I'm sorry, I'm lagging so much. I have so much going on, apparently. Um, so normally we double click this to open up this window, but if that's not working, feel free to hit this big square. So I'm gonna go from blue. Like a darker blue. That's too light. That's good. To green. Why is it going slow, slow? I'm gonna go with a little bit like a neon green, I think is what it looks best. So, feel free to play around with this, remember. Um, and the black dot in the middle means uh, it's like the middle line between where your color is. So if you want it mostly blue or mostly green. I'm just going to leave it in the middle for right now. Oops, delete you. And I'm going to hit OK when I got my two colors that I like. And I'm going to hit OK. And there are all these fun things you can do, which if I select both again, I can do go back up to image adjustments again. And there is brightness and contrast that you could play around with. Like, let's say I want to increase the brightness. Make sure your both your layers are selected again. Maybe I want to just increase my contrast a little bit. Looks a little bit harsh right there, but... So those are fun things to mess around with and do. I'm going to cancel out of that, though. You can also do image adjustments. So we did brightness. Let's do levels. You can move this guy around. Left and right. Gotta cancel out of that. You can also do image adjustments curves, which this is just a straight diagonal line. If you click one time on the line, it adds a dot, and you can kind of click and hold and drag this around. See what looks good. I'm just gonna cancel out of that though. You can do we did brightness contrast, we did levels, we did curves, so now it's exposure. Exposure is like how light you want everything to be. Woo. Funky, funky. And there's offset. Gamma correction. I don't know. Play around. Image adjustments. There's vibrance. It's not doing anything for me. Saturation, so that just increases the color. If you have no saturation, it's really just like black and white. I'm going to cancel out of that though. Image adjustments. Do we do hue and saturation? Hue is here. No, we didn't do this one yet. Hue. Ooh. I'm just going to change it. If you ever want to go back to normal, you can just highlight this number, hit zero, click away, and it will load. Saturation again. So it gives you the option to change saturation in a couple places. Lightness. And so let's say I'm changing this back to zero. And then let's say I want to change this to 10. And you hit OK. It will, when you hit OK, it will load. But if I hit X like I have been doing, then it's not going to save your changes. So make sure when you 
um, let's do color balance. Make sure when you make a change, you're hitting OK here, not X like I have been doing. Because when you hit X, it's going to cancel everything out. You can e increase your reds, your greens. You can decrease your greens. You can increase your blues, decrease your blues. Oops, layer, or image adjustments. So we did brightness, levels, colors, exposure, vibrance, hue, saturation, color balance. Don't worry about black and white or any of these things quite now, or quite yet. But, and what we did before was gradient map. Threshold's basically like black and white and desa desaturate like lowers, it makes it um, less colors. It's the opposite, or opposite of saturate. When you saturate something, you're like increasing the color. When you desaturate something, you're lowering the color. Uh, shadows and highlights is a cool one. Shadows are the darkest part in your images, and highlights are the lighter parts in your images. So it says shadows here, highlights here. So if we want to increase our shadows, it's going to be darker. It's not loading. <laughs> it doesn't want to load. I feel like my computer is just like tired or something. Maybe it's because we're doing like advanced edits on something that's a website that doesn't really like it that much. I'm going to hit X out of here. So you get the gist. Um, that would be image adjustments. You have all these lovely options here. Don't just try to stay away from just doing black and white. Like try to stay um, with two colors that are fun. Again, we can always go back to our gradient map by clicking on gradient map here and changing it to whatever we want. But try to have not just black and white here because, I mean, this looks nice, but it's also very bland and Spotify is not bland normally. Spotify usually has very intense color. Okay, so I have selected my object again. And if you, I think it's command, it's command click. I'm going to select deselect so right now there's no more chance around morgan if i want to select morgan i can hit command and then click on the layer that she's on so command click you might have to do control click on your mac or on your chromebook but you'll see it selects all of morgan here and then to select the background um it would be select inverse and see how it selects everything except for morgan in the order, because we have two different layers here, we have Morgan on one layer and our background on the other, we didn't technically have to go through all that work to get to the background. All we had, all we have to do is just click on the background layer in this case. So in order to deselect something, like I want to get rid of these marching ants, I don't want to hold anything, all I have to do is select, deselect. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click on Morgan, and I'm going to click on the Move tool, and I'm just going to scoot her a little bit. And because there's nothing else on the layer, I can move her back and forth. I can make her bigger or smaller. And because we're working with such a high resolution image, it doesn't really like messing around with things without lagging. Like it likes to lag when there's a high resolution picture on a free website. But um, I'm going to click away to get the bounding boxes away. Now I am ready for circles. So Spotify likes to do circles for their stuff, like in the background, at least that's what I've seen. So I'm going to click on the ellipse tool, I'm going to change my fill to white. You can make your fill whatever, you can add a stroke if you want, I don't want one in this case. And I'm going to make a circle. I want it to be behind Morgan though, and if I click and drag and put it behind Morgan, that works technically. Um, you can also, if I had another circle here, let me move it. If I had another circle here, if I click on this circle here and I'm active on this circle, this is another fun thing to look into. And then I move my mouse onto Morgan and I hit, what is it, option? I option click on the Morgan layer. It puts Morgan inside of the circle. <laughs> That's so fun. I don't know, I just think that's funny, at least. Maybe that's just a me thing. I'm gonna Command Z to undo that. Another way to do it instead of, um, this is the easy way, is click and drag and put it behind Morgan. 
But if you didn't have that option, let's say if you had your background layer and your plain layer on the same one, and there was no way to move the circle behind Morgan, click on the circle tool, holding down control, it will select Morgan. And if you try to delete, make sure, um, make sure you're on the circle tool. When you try to delete, look what happens. It says layers not editable. That is, or editable, there you go. That is because um, you have this symbol right here in the corner of your shape. That means it's a smart object. You don't need to worry too, too much about what that is. All that basically means is you can scale it bigger and smaller and it will never lose the, um, you know, what am I trying to say? Quality of the image. It's a vector basically. So what we're going to do is change that. We need to rasterize it. We need to change it from a vector to a raster. So you need to select our circle here, go to image, or I'm sorry, where is it at? Layer, rasterize. And now that little symbol will disappear. So we have active our shape layer and we're going to control click and then hit delete. And you see now um, it put a circle there. I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm going to go onto my ellipse tool and I'm going to select, deselect, so that way there's no marching ants anywhere. I'm just going to do a little circle right here, and I'm going to go to Layer, Rasterize. I'm going to hold down Control and click on Morgan. Now there's a marching ants around Morgan. I'm going to make sure my shape layer is active, and I'm going to hit Delete to do that. Again, all I needed to technically do is click and drag Morgan, or click and drag the circle behind Morgan. And I'm just going to add a couple more circles of varying sizes just because I want to keep consistency. Throughout my image, that's a lot of circles there, but you know. All right, so now I'm going to add my text tool and I'm going to click to type. I'm going to do like Morgan. I'm going to hit the check mark up here and then click again down here and do Robert check um, and remember you can move around these oops that's my centering dot you can click and move around these so maybe I want to do like um, something like that and if I want to make this bold remember I just have to make sure I'm active on my layer that I want to make bold click on my T tool and you'll see there are options up here I'm going to select my whole text and then there are these different font families for the majority of um, fonts. Over here you can change the different fonts and look around, scroll up and down. But I think the Deja Vu Sans looks a lot like Spotify already, so I'm going to keep that. Then they have these different font families, so it's the same font, it's just different styles like bold, bold oblique, um, book, I like bold. Do I like bold for this? Let's see. I guess I do. For all intents and purposes, I do. Um, so I like that. And let's see, I can do, click on the Robert part. I can make this one bigger. And I'm not gonna make this one bold. I think it looks cooler when there's like a hierarchy in text. Let me click the check, and then I'm going to put down here somewhere like Spotify. And maybe I can put that in my circle. I think that's pretty neat. Where's the dot behind more? There it is. I'm going to move this dot up just a little bit, and then I'm going to layer rasterize and if I'm on the Morgan layer and hold down control oops if I'm on the dot layer and I hold deselect we gotta do this again when I'm on the dot layer and I hold down control for the Morgan layer or command I mean oops I gotta rasterize the Morgan layer first so I'm clicking on the Morgan layer layer rasterize all right Okay, so if I have the Morgan layer here and I move it under dot and I hit the option, it will make the layer mask 
and then I can click on my mouse and move this. around. I'll do that again for people at home. Um, I'm going to draw another circle. And I want it to be like right here. And I'm going to layer rasterize. And I want it to be on top of Morgan. And then I hold down my option. While clicking on my dot layer, it will allow it to go behind. And again, this is just optional. It's just a cool little thing to mess around with. So something like that. I'm actually going to move this circle. I'm going to move this circle because it's making my... It's making Morgan look really complicated there. So something like that looks really neat. And I think my Spotify text needs to be thicker. Yeah, I think this is what more what Spotify looks more like. But something like that. And to turn this in when you're happy with it, all you do is Command Shift 4 and then select what you want. You need to do a whole selection of your whole entire uh, image here and then release. And then you're gonna be turning in this image um, as your final assignment. So if you have any questions, let me know. I hope that helped.